Let us now take some typical examples from percentages. Let us look at the first question. A student has to secure 40% marks to pass an examination. He secured 75 marks and was declared fail by 45 marks. Find the maximum marks set for the examination. So as you can see here, a student must get 40% marks to pass the exam. He has scored 75 marks but still he was declared fail by 45 marks. We are supposed to find out the maximum marks that is nothing but 100% of the marks that can be scored in this examination. Now we know that the pass percentage is 40 because a student has to get 40% marks to pass this exam. Now he has got 75 marks and he failed by 45 marks. So very clearly this 40% should be equal to 75 marks plus 45 marks. Why? Because he has already secured 75. If he gets 45 more, he will pass the exam. So 75 plus 45 is nothing but the passing mark. So 75 plus 45 is equal to 120. So we can understand that 40% is equivalent to 120. And we are supposed to find out the maximum marks. Let us assume that the maximum marks are M, which is equivalent to 100%. So this should be equal to what? As you can see here, we know that 40% is 120, 100% should be what? So by cross multiplication, we get the required answer. So we can say that the maximum marks here would be 100 into 120 divided by 40. As 40 goes 3 times here, the maximum marks will be equal to 3 into 100, 300. So this is how we can solve these type of questions by finding out what is the passing marks and from which we can get the required maximum marks. Let us now take one more typical example from percentages. The question here is 75% of a number when added to 75 becomes the number itself. What is the number? So appears to be a little complicated but this is a very simple question. Let us assume that the number which it is talking about is x. Now the question says 75% of a number that means 75% of x when added to 75 that means this value 75 percent of x when added to 75 becomes the number itself that means the sum of these two should be equal to the number itself that is nothing but x and you're supposed to find out what is the number so by simplifying this equation we get the required answer we know that x is nothing but 100 percent of itself that is x is equal to 100 percent of x so here 100 percent of x minus 75% of x is equal to 75. So we know that 25% of x is equal to 75. So from this x will be equal to 75 into 100 by 25 which is equal to 300. So we can say that the number here is 300. If you can understand the question properly we need not write the first two steps. We can directly say that 25% of x is equal to 75. Why? Because as we can see here 75 percent of a number when added to 75 becomes the number itself. We very well understand that 75 percent of a number should always be added to 25 percent of that number so that it becomes the number itself. So very clearly this 75 here is nothing but 25 percent of this number. So we can directly say 25 percent is 75 and 100 percent is equal to what or the number is equal to what. And by cross multiplication or taking 25% on the other side, we get the answer as 300. Let us now take one more interesting question from percentages. The question here is, in a test consisting of 300 questions, Deepika answered 40% of the first 100 questions correctly. What percent of the remaining 200 questions does she need to answer correctly for her grade in the entire exam to be 50%? So as you can see here, the total number of questions in the test are 300. Deepika has answered 40% of the first 100 questions correctly. What percent of the remaining 200 questions does she need to answer correctly for her grade in the entire exam to be 50%? That means in the overall exam, she has to answer 50% of the questions correctly. Let us first understand what should be her overall performance. Overall, it should be 50% of the total number of questions as it is given in the question that her overall grade should be 50%. So 50% of the total number of questions 300 will be equal to 150. 
that means very clearly Deepika should answer 150 questions correctly to get 50% as her grade in the exam. Now we know that she has answered 40% of the first 100 questions correctly. So 40% of 100 is nothing but 40. That means very clearly out of first 100 questions, 40 questions have been answered correctly. So now we know that overall Deepika should answer 150 questions correctly and already she has answered 40 questions correct from the first 100 questions. That means there are 110 more questions. That is nothing but the difference of 150 and 40 which is equal to 110. So there should be 110 correct questions. So there should be 110 questions that she need to answer correctly to get the grade of 50%. Now left out questions are 200. The remaining questions are 200. So very clearly out of these 200 remaining questions, 110 questions have to be correct. So we need to find out what percent of the remaining questions does she need to answer correctly. So that is nothing but this 110 is what percentage of 200. So 110 is what percentage of 200 is in the form of x is what percent of y and we know that x is what percent of y should be taken as x by y into 100. So 110 is what percent of 200 is to be calculated. We know that x is what percent of y should be taken as x by y into 100. So 110 by 200 into 100 which comes out to be 55 percent. So we can say that out of the remaining 200 questions, she need to answer 55% of the questions correctly so that her overall grade can be 50%. So the simple idea here is we know that the overall grade is 50%. So the number of questions would be 150. 150 questions must be answered correctly. Already out of first 100, she has answered 40% of the questions correctly. That means 40 questions are correct. So the remaining 110 questions that are to be correct have to be from the left out 200 questions. So we need to decide this 110 is what percent of 200 which can be taken as 110 by 200 into 100 and the answer comes out to be 55 percent. That's all from percentages. Remember friends as I've already mentioned this is one of the most important topics from quantitative aptitudes. So practice well on all the various types of models that we have discussed so that solving questions from other topics will become easy for you. See you in the next session. Thank you.